Hi everyone, my name is Sanjay. And my name is Arvind. We are from Team 8027 in Pennsylvania. We are also the founders of EV3 Lessons and Prime Lessons. We know that many of you are debating whether to use the EV3 or the Spike Prime for this year's first LEGO League Challenge. We hope that this session helps you make your decision. One of the first differences you will notice are with the features on the hub. The Spike Prime boots in less than 5 seconds, which is incredibly fast compared to the EV3's boot time. This allows a quick reboot, even if your robot were to crash during a run. In addition, the Spike Prime hub features 6 universal ports. That means you can connect either motors or sensors to any of the ports. Unlike the EV3, which has 4 dedicated sensor and 4 dedicated motor ports. The gyro sensor is also built into the Spike Prime hub, whereas with the EV3, you needed to attach a separate sensor. Overall, you do not lose much in terms of ports by switching to the Spike Prime. Next, let's compare the sensors. The Spike Prime color sensor is improved from the EV3 with the ability to detect more colors and better recognition. It also works better in reflected light mode because it shines a white light instead of a red one. The distance sensor is similar to the EV3 ultrasonic sensor. One cool feature about the Spike Prime distance sensor is that it can be taken apart and custom components can be added. This is not allowed for the robot game, but may be useful for creating prototypes for the innovation project. The force sensor is improved from the touch sensor. It can attack pressure from 0 to 10 newtons, where the touch sensor could only tell if it was pressed or released. The gyro sensor for Spike Prime is built in and is 6 axis gyro, meaning 3 axis gyro and 3 axis accelerometer. It also has no drift and minimal lag. There are some differences in terms of programming languages available for the Spike Prime compared to the EV3. The primary language for Spike Prime is WordBlocks, which is a scratch-based programming language. There is also a text-based MicroPython language built into the same app. It has some basic tutorials and examples available. MicroPython does provide some extra functionality over its scratch-based counterpart. For the EV3, you can use the lab you like EV3G, also known as EV3 Lab, or you can use the new scratch-based EV3 Classroom. There is also an official text-based MicroPython language, but it requires additional work including using a micro SD card and Visual Studio code. You can use non-LEGO supported languages also, such as Java or C++, but these also require more work. The text-based languages, similar to the Spike Prime, generally provide more functionality over the graphical counterparts. Also, Currently, for the Spike Prime, you can only use Scratch or MicroPython. Therefore, to conclude, the Spike Prime software is easier to switch between block paste and Python, but it has fewer languages available than the EV3. In terms of advanced programming for Spike Prime and EV3, all techniques that could be done on the EV3 can also be done with the Spike Prime. We have tested proportional control, gyro move straight, PID line follower, squaring on line, and more in both the Scratch and MicroPython software with the Spike Prime. You can look at our Facebook page Prime Lessons for videos of these techniques in action and our lessons on primelessons.org to learn how to use these techniques with the Spike Prime. There are many improvements with the Spike Prime software-wise. To begin, there is a built-in menu with slots for projects. This is especially useful for FLL teams because they can organize their runs with a numeric ID on the hub, unlike with the EV3. Next, there is a variables monitor on the computer screen. This makes it easy to debug code without an LCD screen. All you have to do is write the data to a variable and then view the debug data on the computer. The Spike Prime software is the same on all platforms. When you were using the EV3, you might have noticed that Chromebooks, Androids, and iPads had only a limited version of the desktop software. However, with the Spike Prime, you get all the same blocks 
which makes it very easy for teams who have multiple platforms to program with the exact same code. The spike prime move blocks also take in centimeters or inches as an input in addition to the traditional degrees rotation and seconds. This makes it easier to program the robot to navigate the field. When using the EV3, you would have to make a my block to accomplish the exact same thing. The spike prime motors have built in stall detection, which is very helpful for first Lego League Challenge teams. On the hardware side, the Spike Prime's electrical components have a much smaller form factor. They also have a more rectangular shape and more connection points. The wires are also thinner and can be managed with the wire clips. This makes it much easier to build with the Spike Prime. The motors also have built-in absolute positioning. The battery can be charged using a USB cable, which is the same as the download port, so you can program at the same time as charging. As I mentioned earlier, the color sensor is improved as well. While there are many improvements with the Spike Prime, there are also some trade-offs that your team should be aware of. One of these trade-offs is with MyBlocks. MyBlocks are only available for use in the project that they are created in. However, they can be easily copied and pasted from one project to another. Furthermore, there are no outputs from MyBlocks. However, you can simply write the output to a variable and use that variable as an output in your code. Note that in MicroPython, functions can ha have outputs and be imported from another program. These are all problems specific to Scratch, which means these are also problems with the new EV3 Classroom. There are also some trade-offs with the sensors. The distance sensor doesn't work at angles when close to a surface, but this becomes less of a problem when the sensor is farther away. There also is no calibration for the color sensor. You can work around this with code. However, the sensor seems to work well without a calibration. Also, there is no file reading and writing in the word blocks programming, but this can be done in MicroPython. In addition, the battery must be connected to the hub to charge. You cannot have extra batteries on the side charging unless you have an additional hub. Finally, the wire length for the electrical components is fixed. However, the wire length is sufficient for first LEGO League. If it is too long, you can use the wire clips to easily keep them out of the way. We also found one unexpected behavior with the Spike Prime. With the steering blocks, the steering input is not linear. This means that the difference between 100 steering and 99 steering is significant. The quick workaround is to simply use tank blocks instead. While the gyro sensor has no drift and minimal lag, there are still some trade-offs. First, you cannot access the gyro rate or accelerometer in Scratch. However, this can be done in MicroPython. There is also some inaccuracy with the readings. For example, turning the hub 360 degrees produces an angle reading that is not 360 degrees. This seems to be hub-specific. For example, hub 1 will consistently be 7 degrees off and hub 2 will consistently be 4 degrees off. The amount of error is also impacted by the complexity of other running code. For example, updating the light matrix at the same time will increase the error by about 25 degrees per 360 degree turn. There is a workaround for these problems. For the first problem, you may need to record the error for your hub and scale the gyro readings accordingly. For the second problem, you will need to make sure that the gyro is read less frequently or have little code running at the same time. Another trade-off is with the file size. Projects fail to download with very large programs. The latest version of the software does provide you with a warning when this limit is reached and does not allow you to download the code to your robot. One thing to note is that these problems are in the current version of the software and updates might come out later to fix them. In conclusion, if you have EV3s or just bought them, that is not a problem. EV3 is still a great product. First, will allow multiple platforms and competitions are not geared to a specific platform. You will not get extra points based on the platform you picked. However, if you have the budget or are just starting out, you can try Spike Prime. 
There are trade-offs and advantages of both platforms. Do not underestimate the capabilities of Spike Prime. We hope that this session was helpful for you. Feel free to reach out to us at any time with any questions you have or if you need help. Good luck to all teams competing this season.